All right, well, good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Wow, that sounds really loud. Uh, they're going to adjust that while I keep talking. But anyway, welcome. It's great to have you here. I am so glad you came out to church today. And uh, I'll tell you, this topic that we're on for this month, uh, it is a little challenging. I think every one of us kind of a little bit inside say, yeah, I, I really want to know more, and I really want my relationship to be better. But on the, otherwise, you know, I, I think there's another side of us that kind of says, but I wish I was listening to this without my spouse. I mean, just so I could kind of chew on it for a while first. But uh, hey, here we are. We're all together, and I just thank you for coming. I want to welcome everybody who's watching us online. It's great to have you join us as well. This whole topic for better is... Uh, you know, all about marriage and the fact that God created marriage. We started with that, that it is God's design. People didn't just make this up. It is God's design, and it is His intention, His purpose for marriage is to be the most incredible relationship that any human being could have. I mean, really, where He's designed, uh, He said that the two will become one. And not, not just one flesh, but spiritually, you know, kind of emotionally and, and everything. Just kind of be really, really one. I mean, it was just so close together, like no other relationship possible. And no matter where you are in marriage, some of you are not married. Uh, some of you are divorced and you had been married. Some of you, uh, the ones of us who are married, I think that there's just a complete gamut from, you know, uh, uh, we're on this side where we, you know, we're just basically living together and we kind of got our own separate lives, you know, all the way to we have a very satisfying relationship in our marriage and I'm really happy with it. So no matter where we are in all of that, every one of us can have a better marriage. If you get remarried, it can be better than the first one. When you do get married, it can be as, be as best as possible. And if you're married now, it can even be better than that. And what I'm going to talk about today, I believe, and here we're spending four weeks on this, and every week I want to say this is the number one thing, but this is the number one thing. I, I believe this is the most powerful thing uh, in our marriages. I think that the activity, the the thing I'm going to talk about us doing today uh, will do more to help your marriage than any other one thing that you can do. As a matter of fact, I believe with all of my heart you can never have a great marriage. You can have a good one, but you can't have a great marriage without applying this to your life. As a matter of fact, it's so powerful and so life-changing that I believe it's the Number one thing of, of power to help us, if, if we did this activity, it would help us in every area of our life. As a matter of fact, every one of our lives would be more fulfilled, more satisfying, more complete if we applied this to our life. But I need to warn you, it is not easy. As a matter of fact, as soon as I say what it is, a lot of us are going to push back. And we're going to say, oh, I don't want to do that. And you're going to like, is there another way? How about if I just skip that and, and we have a great marriage? It'd be tough. This, this activity is, uh, I think it's very humbling. I think it takes humility on all of our part. I think it, uh, what we talked about last week, just kind of being vulnerable uh, this activity uh, requires extreme vulnerability. This activity is uh, almost embarrassing. I mean, it really can be embarrassing. However, it is the most powerful thing we can do for our marriages. It is the number one help for our marriages. And what is this one thing? It's prayer. But more specifically, it's praying together. Praying together is probably the number one single most powerful thing you can do for your relationship and for your marriage. And uh, psychology today uh, had done a lot of research. This is not a Christian uh, research company. It's not a Christian magazine. But psychology today has done many, many studies on this. And they have found that um, partner focused petitional prayers partner focused petitional prayers it increases dramatically increases couples closeness and couples committedness in a relationship 
Well, what, what does that mean? Well, that, that means this. When a couple prays together, but when each one prays for the other, a petitional prayer, in other words, not just the Our Father, Our Heaven, not, not a recited prayer, but a asking God prayer, petition to God for that other person. In other words, praying for the other person and praying for their life, it, it drastically increases marriage satisfaction and commitment. As a matter of fact, they've done many studies on, on this type of thing, and they found that there's all kinds of benefits. There's even a benefit, and they have found across the board, for couples who actually even go to church together. There is an increase in their marital satisfaction and their commitment together. It's very powerful to go to church together. It's very powerful to be connected to God together. And it is extremely powerful to pray together and pray for each other it, as a spike and highly increases the satisfaction that people have in marriage. Now, is it magic? No, it's not magic. But there are reasons why this helps. There's, there are actually reasons why this dramatically increases the satisfaction, closeness, and everything in a marriage. And there's basically two reasons for couples who pray together that it absolutely increases. There's two reasons. The first one is this. It is the power of God. I mean, we can't, the power of God is real that God is working, that God is with us, that God listens to our prayers, that God acts on our behalf, and God does things in this world. I have seen so many things change. I have seen the power of God in people's lives by prayer, and that God answers prayer, and God moves in our lives when we pray. And when we pray together as a couple, there is the power of God that actually works in the relationship, actually works in the other person's life. And I think the Bible makes this so crystal clear that I want to just, even as we go to read this, to challenge you that we should pray more. This is a great idea because of the power of God. We find here in 1 John, he says this, this is the confidence. I don't know why prayer is always the last thing. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God. That when we come together and we approach God, we say, Father, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. God has open ears. He hears us when we pray. God of the universe, he is listening. He is there. He, he hears our prayers to him. And if we know that he hears us, and we do, we know he hears us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. In other words, we know that God answers prayer. Now, it's not always exactly the way we ask, but he always hears us, and he always answers. And that is the confidence that you and I can have, that we can just know that. So in our relationships, in, in our marriages, wherever you are in that marriage, if you want it to be better, we can have God on our side and the power of God moving on our side if we ask him. If we pray together and ask God to be moving and working in our marriage, that we know he hears us and we know that he answers us in everything. Uh, James says kind of the similar thing just to give us this confidence in prayer. He says this, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. Think of it as a couple and pray for each other so that you may be healed. This isn't just physical healing. This is so that our relationship will be healed. Our emotions will be healed. So that we will be healed and complete people. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. This is the confidence that we can have. This is what we can know that prayer is powerful and effective. And God is moving and God listens and he's active when we pray. So no wonder couples who pray together have an increase in their, in their satisfaction, their commitment, and their enjoyment of marriage. And it's a, it's a better place because we pray for each other. And, and it helps. And it's probably the most, one, the most powerful thing that we could do. But there, there's, there's some of us here, and I have seen this many, many times over the years, where one partner does more praying than the other, and they don't necessarily pray together, but but one prays for each other. And you know what? I just think there, there's probably some of you here, matter of fact, I'm sure of it, 
that your marriage was uh, not doing well. The other partner seemed to be drifting further and further away. And you prayed. And you prayed and you prayed. And even as I'm saying the confidence that we can have, you're thinking, I don't think so, Kevin. I, I've done that. I did that for two years before my husband left. And he left. And it's been miserable. Or my wife left. And you say, how can we be so confident when I know that, that God didn't do anything in my marriage, that God didn't do anything for me? And I want to address that because I don't want you to think that prayer is not powerful and effective and God hears us and God is moving. But there's one thing we need to understand, that God chooses never to interfere with a person's will. See, praying for another person is different than praying for anything else in this, that God chooses never to change a person's will. He gives all of us free will, and even he will not interfere with that. He will not change somebody's heart, change their will against their will. He won't. And so sometimes we think, well, I prayed and prayed and, and nothing happened. God leaves that alone. We can't, when we're praying for somebody else, that we can pray for many things, and God can do many things in their life. But what God's not going to do is he's not going to change their heart to love you again. He's not going to change their decisions. He's not going to do that. But what he can do, and what God often does, is that he can, he can change things around a person to reveal to them truth, to reveal to them what's going on, to reveal the loss, to reveal something deeper, and then they will make their own choice. They will make their own decision. But I see that happen also all the time, where God, when we pray for somebody, that God kind of opens their eyes. He doesn't change their will, but he opens their eyes to see things differently, and then they choose to change their mind, change their will. And then when they ask God to help them, then it is an amazing thing happens. So don't underestimate the power of praying for your partner. The power of God is moving. The power of God is there. The, God does amazing things. But he doesn't change somebody's will. We need to keep that in mind. But also when we're praying for somebody... Do you know what? Most of the time, the power, the power of God's amazing because when you and I pray for somebody else, when we intercede, when we pray for another person, God always works in our heart. And in the case of a marriage, when we are praying for each other, you're praying for your spouse, God will always work in your heart as the prayer, praying for somebody else. And he will work in your heart and he will change your heart. And it is a miracle how God can absolutely change our perspective, change our view of things when we're praying. And praying for our partner is so valuable and so important that God actually does miracles. He can change uh, things and circumstances and situations. And he, he almost always does, except where it comes in a place of somebody's will that he doesn't make that happen. So couples that pray together... It works, mainly because of the power of God. But there's another reason. Besides the power of God when we pray together, working in our lives, there is another power at work, and it's the power of connection. The power of connection in prayer is unmatched by anything else. It is amazing the power of two people connecting in such an intimate way as talking to God together. It is amazing what happens when two people do that. When, husbands, when you ask your wife, honey, can you come here for a minute? Just sit down there. And you grab her hands. And you look her in the eyes. And you say, I want to pray for you. And you start praying for her. You pray for her fears, for her insecurities. You ask God to bless her, to fill her, 
to help her, to, to give her the things that she needs to overcome some fears and some insecurities, to show her love, and you pray for her. There is a connection there. Besides the power of God working, there is the power of a connection that is so deep. It is the deepest connection a person can have, praying for each other and pouring your heart out for that other person. Wives, when you are holding your husband's hands and you are praying for him and for his success and for all of the, the difficulties and struggles he's going through, and you're praying for him to have courage and strength. And when you're praying to God together, there is an intimate connection there that can be found in no other way than connecting with one another and praying for one another. And what you do is you, you ask God to move in their lives. And what you're, what's happening in this connection is it is absolutely being vulnerable. It is exposing your deepest thoughts, your deepest concerns. And you know what? It is better than flowers on Valentine's Day to actually share your heart out loud, touching the other person's hands, inviting God to move in that person's life is an absolutely, in, it is this personal connection that is so deep that the walls, last week we were talking about those walls that keep us apart, those, those walls just come crumbling in and there's a closeness there. But it's, it is very, again, there's a huge vulnerability to that. There's a huge putting yourself out there. It is, it's, it's risky. But there's nothing like it. And God tells us, as a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul kind of shares with us the, 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 how God is involved in this. And here's what he says. He says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but rather in humility, and it takes humility, which your partner will love, in humility value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but to each of you, but each of you to the interest of the others or of the other. You see, there is this humility and this intimacy and this connection when we hold each other's hands and we pray for the other person because now when you're praying, that person becomes who you're concerned about. That person is what you are asking and petitioning God to move in that person's life. And it's not all about me. As a matter of fact, the more couples do this, the more they are concerned for the other person and how God's moving and working in their lives. It is an amazing transformational thing for a husband and wife to pray together, but not just together, but to pray for each other when they're praying together. Now, I know just by statistics, I know that most of us in this room or watching this online do not pray together. I just know that. So what I'm going to do is ask us to turn to our partner right now. <laughs> no way. <laughs> you would never come back here. I would never go to a place. I would never go somewhere where somebody would manipulate like that. Um, you, thank God that I'm not going to ask us to do that, right? Right now, every one of you, thank you, Jesus. You know, okay. <clears throat> I am not going to ask you to do that. However, I am going to suggest to you to think about it. Not here, but when you get home, when the time is right, and I know, I know the statistics. Most of us don't pray out loud. I realize what, what we're talking about today is probably one of the biggest stretches you will ever do. It's it's probably one of those, those biggest, like, I'm uncomfortable. It's out of your comfort zone huge. What I'm going to ask you guys to do is, if your marriage is at least not, you know, where you're, it, it's got to be where you're not at, at odds with each other so much. I mean, if you are fighting and you have so much animosity and unforgiveness and stuff like that, you, you need counseling. 
But if you're at a place where you don't hate each other and you, uh, you actually are, you know, your marriage is fairly decent, I want to encourage you to go home and do this. To go home and do this. And um, it would be nice if it was initiated by the husband. Uh, but husbands, if you don't, wives, very carefully, and very thoughtfully, ask your husband to do that with you. And, uh, and pray for each other. But because that is so difficult, I'm going to kind of give you a couple of how to approach this or how do you start praying for each other. It will feel awkward. It will feel maybe like there's no connection at first just because of the self-consciousness of praying out loud with your spouse and for each other. But I want to just give you a couple of guidelines. As you do, make sure that the kids aren't around and it's just nice and quiet. It's you two together. And I want to ask you to just uh, sit together. And uh, maybe if you don't want to hold hands, maybe uh, you can just, uh, husband can put his arm around his wife and, and uh, start talking to God. And let me tell you how you start. You start by just saying thank you. Either holding her hand or your arm around her, just say thank you. Out loud, Father, I just thank you so much for our family. Thank you for all of, our, all of our possessions and the things you've blessed us with. Thank you, Father, for our relationship, our kids, our parents, our brothers, our sisters. Just thank you for the life that you've given us. And as we look around, we can see all of the awesome things that you've done in our life. And Father, I just thank you for that. And then after a few moments of saying thank you, each one of you taking a turn, then maybe each one of you can take a turn just praying for some, for some common values that you have or some, some, some common like, uh, concerns that you have together, like your children. Listen, if you have kids, it's kind of easy to pray for the kids. It is. We're both of you. It's not too intimidating uh, to just pray for your kids. Pray for these common things that you both value. Lord, we just pray that you, know, you would continue to bless our kids and I ask that you would keep them safe and Lord, may they grow up to know you and to trust you and be, be talking to God together about some common things. Lord, I just pray that you would you know, help us with our finances, work in our, in our life with our finances. Lord, help us if there's any job change. Or Lord, we just want to see you be active in our life in this way. We have a vacation coming up, Father. Just pray that, that you would be with us in that, that you would keep us safe, that things would work out, and that you would be with us. And just, uh, you know, pray for those common things. And then finally, pray for each other. And, you know, you can start out by simple things. Praying for, I mean, it, it, you pray for your wife and just some of the concerns she has. And every woman's different. But guys, you know, what, what, is, she, what is her main concerns? Is she really concerned about so the kids in school and how they're doing? Is she really, really concerned about the stuff around the house that's broken and you don't fix, you know? I mean, I don't know. Is it, uh, what, are, what are her concerns? What are the things? And then pray for those things for her. Just pray. Father, I pray for my wife that she would see you working in her life. And Lord, I pray that, that uh, you would help her be calm with the kids and help her show love to the kids and then pray that she would experience love and security and, and those types of things pray for you and then the wife can pray for the husband for the same thing what are his concerns is he worried at work does he feel like you know he's he is accomplishing the things in life that that God's called him to accomplish and just you know pray for those things in your life and I just encourage you to pray for one another like that and start that way Listen, this is a very, very difficult thing to do. And I'm not trying to make, I'm not, you know, well, you're more spiritual if you can do this. or No, you know what, it's not about that. It's about, it's about each one of us stepping out of our comfort zone, really stretching because we want God to move in our marriages and we want to be as close as possible because I don't believe, I mean, you can have a very good marriage and you can be happy with it, but if you want a great marriage, I don't believe it can be done without praying together. I don't. It won't be the best it can be. But imagine if you 
start it, even though it's rough and it's a little uncomfortable, but you just start it praying together. Say, say, hey, you know what? We're going we're gonna to start by praying together um, Monday night and, and Friday night. You know, or, or just pick a few times that we're going to pray together and do that and start with that and see where it goes. Because imagine, even as I was talking about this, and I, I asked some other people just this question, uh, just randomly kind of asked some people, you know, do you pray with your spouse? No. Do you? No. No. And everybody asked, said no. But I asked this question, would you like to? Would you, do you wish you were? Every one of them said yes. Yeah, I do wish I was. And I know why we don't. Why? Because it's uncomfortable, it's awkward, it's embarrassing. You really expose yourself. It takes a lot of humility. But imagine if you did. Just imagine if you did. A closeness and your, your marriage could grow together. And statistics say that your marriage will be more fulfilling and you will be more committed to it than ever before. Now, what do you do if, if your spouse is not a Christian, your spouse doesn't want to pray, or what do you do if you're in that situation where they just won't, but you want to? I would encourage you to not push and make some. that's only going to tick them off, you know, or tick her off or whatever. You can't push or make somebody pray. You just can't. You can ask. And no matter what you think the answer might be, I encourage you all to ask anyway, ask. Would you like to pray together? And if they say no, then it's no. But what can you do? You can pray anyway. You can pray by yourself. And you know these things we just read about prayer and how powerful prayer is, and God hears us, and God's moving on our behalf. I often wonder, and I think just about Christianity, why is prayer the last thing we go to sometimes? I think it would be good for all of us, and this is encouragement for myself as well, to pray for our marriages, to pray for our spouse. Now, the best thing to do is to pray together, but if you can't together, then do it separate, but at least pray together. I know that um, this is an extremely challenging thing, and I, I, I realize that some of us are just going to resist it, but I just want to ask you this, this, this question before we close, and that is this. Do you believe your marriage would change for the better if you prayed together? doesn't matter what I say. Do you believe it would make a difference? And if you believe it would make a difference, then isn't it worth the challenge? Isn't it worth trying? Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you so much for your advice to us. I thank you that you tell us that you're listening, you're here. And we know that you're listening. We know every time we say, Father, you're there, you're listening. And the confidence we have is if we know you hear us, we know you're responding. We know you are. And Father, prayer is powerful and effective. I know how scary it is. But I pray, God, that you would move in each one of our lives, challenge us, push us a little bit to step out of our comfort zone and to ask our partner to pray with us. Give us the boldness, Father, in Jesus' name, amen.